Happy Monday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We did get a little bit of rain here locally and we don't have any major hurricane heading our way. So we've got some things to be thankful for. However, we do have a major hurricane out in the Atlantic. So I am here to let you know exactly where it is now, how strong it is, where it's headed and what other potential systems may be popping up for the rest of the week. So let's get right to your afternoon tropical update for this Monday. Of course, it is the peak of hurricane season, the actual peak right around September 10th, and it is September 11th. So you can see we are at the top of the roller coaster right now, and it's going to take a while before we start to slide back down to little to no activity. So this is the time of the year where we expect things to be very busy out in the tropics, really heating up. And we've had that basically for the last couple of weeks, several named storms. We've had some hurricanes and we have another major hurricane that we are tracking out in the Atlantic. So let me show you where it is. Of course, it is Hurricane Lee now pushing into the Western Atlantic. The good news for the Caribbean islands is the fact that it is passing far enough north of the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Dominican Republic, to where they're not experiencing extreme impacts. But of course, there's gonna be some dangerous rip currents, life-threatening surf could be possible, and maybe a little wind and rain, but overall the majority of the impacts from Lee should stay north of those Caribbean islands. But of course it's going to be rough out at the beaches and folks that are going out to the beach for a swim will have to be extremely careful, not just for the Caribbean islands, but for a big portion of the east coast of the US as well, because Lee will basically be tracking northwest and eventually north and it's going to really churn up those waters on the east coast of the U.S. And folks in New England especially should be watching this closely because by the end of the week, there could be some larger impacts being felt there. We're also closely tracking Margo, which as of the last advisory that came out a few minutes ago, has become the fifth hurricane of the season for the Atlantic Basin. So it is still out in the central Atlantic and it is drifting north. So I don't expect it to get anywhere close to the U.S. or to the Caribbean. So that that is some good news. Let's talk about Hurricane Lee. We did have the NOAA Hurricane Hunters flying through this earlier today. I think they have completed their mission, but they did find that Hurricane Lee still is maintaining major hurricane status. That means a category three hurricane or greater. So right now it is still a category three. Of course, last week it blew up to a monstrous category five hurricane. That's about as bad as it gets. Then it weakened to a four, a three, and it went all the way down to a category two, but it is back up strengthening to a category three. And we do expect it to likely maintain that powerful intensity as we go through the next few days. So here's the latest with Hurricane Lee. As of the 4 p.m. advisory, we've got winds at 115 miles per hour. So still a category three hurricane. Category three starts at 111 miles per hour on the Saffir Simpson scale. Movement is to the west northwest at seven miles per hour. So it's kind of headed this way. That will keep it north of San Juan and the rest of Puerto Rico, north of the Dominican Republic, and it should keep it north of the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas as well. If you got a quick vacay, maybe taking a flight over to the Bahamas, I'm sure you don't want this monster of a hurricane heading your way. So it looks like it will stay away, but as I mentioned, the beaches will be a little rough out there with the rip current threat, with the higher surf. So just make sure if you are heading that way that you are extra careful. Pressure is still fairly low in this since it is still a major hurricane, 948 millibars. Let me show you the latest track. It is currently tracking to the west northwest. It slowed down a little bit, but we anticipate it to maintain that category three strength at least through the middle of the week. So Wednesday, 115 mile per hour winds, that puts it as a category three. Late Thursday into early Friday, it's likely going to slide just to the west of Bermuda. So we could have some tropical storm force conditions there. But notice it's staying away from Florida, from the Carolina coast, from the mid-Atlantic coast. But look what happens by the end of the week into the weekend. Saturday afternoon, still a category one hurricane, but it could potentially head towards Boston, other portions of New England, or it could head over towards Nova Scotia up into Canada. So it looks like Hurricane Lee could still have some pretty major impacts for parts of New England by the end of the week and the weekend and definitely up into portions of Canada as well. So we're going to have to watch this one closely, but at least it looks like folks in Florida, the Carolinas, 
will be spared from this one. I want to show you the spaghetti model forecast as we go through the next several days and it takes it almost due north up closer to Halifax, these models at least, and just to the east of Boston. But you have to remember this is a pretty large hurricane so impacts will be felt a long ways away from the center. So even if Boston does not get a direct hit, they're still going to be dealing with likely some rain bands, some of those outer rain bands, some gusty wind, potentially a tornado threat, and of course the rough surf and the rip current risk. This is one of our main long range computer models that we look at. This is the Euro model forecast and I want to take you through the next several days. You can see now that Hurricane Lee is north of Puerto Rico, well to the south of Bermuda, but it is going to track west northwest and then due north passing west of Bermuda likely Thursday evening and early Friday and then getting close to Boston and other portions of the northeast US by Saturday and impacting portions of Nova Scotia as well. So we're going to have to watch Lee closely. It's not headed here to Southeast Texas, but it could still have some US impacts. I also want to show you our other main long range model. This is the GFS or American model, and you can see Hurricane Margo there, Hurricane Lee there. Margo stays way out in the Atlantic. Lee will get a little closer to the US, especially by the end of the week, potentially causing some impacts in New England. But I also want to point out something else that pops up on this map by the end of the week. This is Invest 98L. This is currently rolling off of the west coast of Africa and it's just a tropical wave now. But as we get towards this weekend, it could start to strengthen into the next tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane. The next name on the list would be Nigel. So this could very well be Nigel. And I want to also note that it is developing much farther south. So this one could actually have a better chance to make it into the Caribbean and potentially the Gulf of Mexico. And that means there's always a risk we could be impacted. So we are going to closely track what happens with Invest 98L. Currently, a tropical wave in the far east Atlantic. I'll tell you more about Invest 98L in just a minute, but first let me give you the latest track of our newly formed Hurricane Margo. Of course, it was a tropical storm, now up to hurricane status, a category one, 75 mile per hour winds, movement to the north at 12 miles per hour, and that pressure at 988 millibars. The good thing with this one, it's not expected to impact land. It will continue to basically slide up to the north and it will strengthen a little bit. In fact, as we go into Thursday afternoon, likely a category two hurricane by then with winds around 100 miles per hour as we go into Wednesday and Thursday early and then it starts to weaken a little bit after that. So we are going to see it strengthen likely over the next couple of days and then weaken back to a category one by the weekend, but it is not expected to roll over any major land areas. So here's Hurricane Lee close to Puerto Rico, Hurricane Margo farther out into the Atlantic, and then we've got our two tropical waves in the far east Atlantic. So I want to talk about those a little bit because we have to watch those closely as as well with it being right around the peak of hurricane season. So we've got this tropical wave with only a 10% shot for development over the next two days and over the next seven days. But then we have a stronger tropical wave east of that one close to the west coast of Africa. That one has a 60 percent medium chance for development over the next week. So the models are actually indicating that the stronger tropical wave in the orange will likely kind of swallow up that weaker tropical wave off to the west of it and they're going to combine and that will be our Invest 98L and that is the one that could potentially turn into Nigel over the next several days. So lots to watch in the Atlantic Basin. Fortunately, it's all pretty far away from us. Gulf of Mexico still very quiet, so nothing of a tropical variety headed our way. Caribbean pretty quiet as well. All the action at this point out in the Atlantic with Hurricane Lee, Hurricane Margo, and two additional tropical waves. But if we were to get anything rolling into the Gulf, you still see that the water temperatures are super warm, middle to upper 80s for those buoy tips showing up across much of the Gulf. Same story for the Caribbean and for the Atlantic as well. Very warm waters out there. So we will continue monitoring things closely because of course that warm water acts as that fuel to rapidly strengthen these systems, especially during the peak of hurricane season, really during any time of hurricane season. But this is the time where we really start to closely monitor for more activity. As you can see, we've already been through almost two panels of names. We've gotten all the way to Margo. And as I mentioned, the next name on the list would be Nigel. 
and we could have Nigel in as little as a couple of days or maybe a week from now, but it definitely looks like a good possibility. And then we would go to Ophelia after Nigel. So still a lot of action potentially for the remainder of our hurricane season, which lasts through the end of November. So as I've been mentioning all season long, Make sure you have a plan in place. Make sure you have that emergency hurricane kit ready. Make sure you've done a checkup on your insurance. Check with your agent, read over your current insurance plan, and make sure you have that coverage that you desire. If you don't, you may want to talk about redoing some things to make sure you've got that flood insurance. Make sure everything in your home is covered and just try to be prepared in case we do get a tropical storm or hurricane headed our way. Well, that's it for your Monday. Of course, you can always download our Fox 26 weather app to get all of your latest tropical updates, forecast cones, follow me feature, and any tropical weather alerts that we have popping up. Fortunately, nothing headed our way for likely at least another week. So we can keep our fingers crossed that we can sail on through the remainder of this hurricane season without any tropical systems impacting us here in Southeast Texas. That would be great, but of course the threat is always there and we will be here tracking it and updating you every afternoon. Once again, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shane. Enjoy the rest of your Monday.